Over the summer, many of our fellow steamies were visiting the Tallyclin Railway in Wales for the Audrey Extravaganza. Sadly, I could not attend as I have a family to support and a cost of living crisis blasted right through my money. So I decided to take a trip to the Summer Lee Museum of Scottish Industrial Life. They were hosting a steam fair for the Friends of Summer Lee on the 13th and 14th of August 2022. I went on the Sunday the 14th. I went down at 10am to avoid the crowds. I had an absolute whale of a time. Got to see a lot of steam engines, traction engines, a steam roller, and got to interview some very special people who know all about these engines. And instead of just keeping it to myself, I decided to share it with you all on this channel. Here's a look back at my visit to Summer Lee. So can you give me your name please? It's uh, Alistair Webster. So can you, can you tell me about this beautiful engine that we've got right here? Yeah, so what you've got here is a, it's a one third scale model of a Foster uh, general purpose traction engine. So you're kind of your general tractor of the day. You'd use it for haulage, you'd use it for threshing, driving sawmills, just whatever, whatever you needed um, at the time. Fantastic. Uh, do you know when it was built? So it was constructed, it started in 1997 um, mm. by a gentleman down in the south of England. Uh, it took him 10 years to build it. Wow. And uh, we've owned it since 2015. So uh, we, now we are rallying it through uh, uh, Scotland. He's absolutely beautiful. Uh, is it a he or a she? Does it have a name? Uh, it doesn't actually have a name, no. It does need one. Uh, oh, definitely. Like, all the fans will be clamouring for one. <laughs> uh, when we just decide to come up to Summer Lee to show, off, show them off? Uh, we've been coming here for many years, in fact, since the place uh, first opened. So uh, we've been involved in the uh, Steam events here for the last uh, 20 years or so. But uh, we've uh, come down from Aberdeen this weekend. Oh, nice. To, uh, <laughs> just to uh, enjoy steaming in such a nice environment. We say often he's travels after here. we go get a uh, nice wee... Clean yeah. and back and yeah. back into the sheds. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I clean during the week, and then we're at uh, an event in Aberdeenshire next weekend. Oh, uh, lovely! So it's uh, back out there at uh, Bankery, mm -hmm. and then uh, down into an event in Yorkshire in September. So it's uh, very well travelled. Oh, fantastic! Well, it's just nice to see like, them getting like, made and restored and like, brought back to their full glory. <laughs> uh, Alistair, an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for taking the Thank time. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> So can you tell me your name please sir? Yeah, Pete Hill. Pete, I'm Andrew, very nice to meet you. And you. Right, so tell us about this beautiful engine that we've got right here. Uh, it's a 3 inch scale model of a Fowler A7 agricultural engine. So originally the full size engine would have been used for things like driving a saw bench or driving a threshing mill, um, transporting moving a threshing mill between farms. Um, the sort of period of that engine would be sort of early 1900s. Wow. Uh, this is just a model, so it wasn't built for anything other than amusement and a bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, three inch scale, that's three inches to the foot of the full size, so a quarter full size. Wow. Um, it will comfortably pull a couple of adults and on tarmac three or four probably and uh, it's just really it's a bit of fun. Uh, does it have a name? Uh, no, uh, no, it doesn't have a name. Um, it was built in 2000 by a chap in Bedfordshire and around about then uh, that's when the first boiler test was mm. um, and I bought it about five years ago. Um, wow. Mainly I'm building a very similar engine um, ah. but that's been a 10 year project that is now about three years, uh, I've got about three years worth of work done. Wow. I'm about seven years behind schedule uh, and it'll probably take me yeah. another 10 years to finish it. So, <laughs> what uh, type of engine are you building? Uh, again, a three inch scale, so quarter full size, but it's going to be slightly larger. It's um, a model of a, um, a B5 Fowler crane engine. So it has a, a crane attachment, a crane jib on the front um, with wow. winding gear. Um, that was a, a road locomotive that spent, uh, it's a model of an, a particular engine, the Great North. It was built in 1905, I think, and it spent its entire working life in Leith in Edinburgh, moving equipment around mm. the docks. Uh, so that's, a, that's the one I'm working on, but as I say, that's probably another 10 years before <laughs> it's going to be finished. Well, hopefully we'll have a bit of eyeballs on the channel. We can try and get something towards it to help keep it going. Cool. But thank you so much for speaking to me today. It's absolutely brilliant. Enjoy thank you. your day. I will do. So could you tell me your name, please, sir? No, it's Jim. Jim, nice to meet you. Can you Hi. tell me a bit about this Baldwin steam truck? 
Well, it was originally built by a guy who was a blacksmith down in Bury St Edmunds wow. in England. Mm -hmm. And it was finished in 2007. Uh, it's road registered, so you can take it down the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> I can just picture that, just like well, that can't go past how miles an hour. It's like, it's like you see a tractor on a main road. You're like, what? So what was it originally used for? Well, it's a toy. So it's got a, a vertical steam boiler, coal fired locomotive, twin cylinder engine. Wow, it's quite a giant. It's seven and a quarter inch scale. Yeah. Uh, then that drives. Uh, reliant Robin gearbox. Wow! And then it drives the back wheels. Cool. So how fast can the uh, the steam truck go? The fastest we've ever taken it up to is about 18 miles an hour. Uh, it gets a bit hairy at that speed. Mm. You can't bump or something. Uh, so what brings you down to Summer Lee today? Uh, well, we come here every year when the steam show's on. Well, where are you off to next? Well, I don't know actually. I'm kind of busy with other things this summer, but the next one we do is down in the north of England uh, near Catrick Army Camp. It's a village oh, called wow. Hunton, which that's, is a, a really big show there. That's fantastic. Well, Jim, I won't take up too much of your time, so I know okay. you'll be busy. Thank you so much for speaking to me. See ya. So could you give me your name, please? I'm George Kerr. Tell me a bit about Cameronian. Well, she's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Cameronian started off life as a road roller. Uh, she was built in Kent in 1935. She spent her, most of her working life working for King & Company, which later became Tarmac, a firm called Tarmac. Yeah. And she ended her working life up in Inverness. Ah. She was brought back to, a, to the yard to be scrapped. And we managed to save her from the scrap man just at the mm. last minute. Good. Uh, took us 15 years to get her into this sort of condition. Yeah. It was a lot of work. Uh, mm -hmm. We've just done a lot of boiler work on the front end yeah. to, to get it to summer week. Well, the hard work has definitely paid off. She's an absolute beaut. Well, how much did you actually get the um, get her for? A pretty penny? Scrap, scrap man, 1964. Wow. Scrap was £8 a tonne. Wow, and she's eight tons. So work that one out. <laughs> well, um, I'll need to work that one out. I'm good at interviews. I'm rubbish at maths. <laughs> so where's uh, Cameronian off to after summer leaf? Uh, we've got quite a full schedule after here. We're, uh, we're at, not taking the engine down, but we're going to Great Dorset Steam Fair next week for a week. Oh, wow. Because we've got various friends with engines down there, and we go and play with them. Yeah. And then we'll come back up from that, and we go to the Viking Festival down at Largs. Oh, fantastic. Spend the weekend down there. And then the weekend after that, there's a wood cutting event uh, with boys with the chainsaws come and do wood carving in their local field. And wow. we go to that and we burn all the wood chips for them. Ah, very interesting. I think my wife would be interested in that, be a yeah. farmhand herself but back in the day. Well, that's, on, that's on in Beef Ayrshire on the 10th of September. Uh, the 10th. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much. So could you give me your name, please, sir? Martin. Martin, I'm Andrew. Nice to meet you. And uh, what's your name, my dear? Penny. Penny. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about this magnificent engine, which is absolutely beautiful? Well, this is a one-third scale model. Mm -hmm. a barrel, single crank compound, uh, agricultural engine. Wow. So well, um, what was the engine there originally kind of built for? It was built for um, agricultural purposes. So you would have been pulling maybe a threshing box from one farm to the next. Mm -hmm. And then the big flywheel would have a belt put on it, and that would drive the threshing box. Mm -hmm. um, there's a winch on the back axle, so you might be pulling out tree stumps, mm -hmm. um, or rescuing yourself if you've got into a really boggy patch. So, so what, what brings you to Summer Lee today? Well, it's an event we've done for the last several years, mm -hmm. from the last two, of course, but yeah. cancelled. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice, friendly place to be. So where's uh, she off on our travels next? Um, I think this is the last two for us this year. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm back in the workshop building the next one. Oh, are we exclusive? A ginger exclusive? We love these. <laughs> uh, uh, so, what are you building? What are you working on? Uh, it's a seven inch scale Fowler steam lorry. Wow. Right, thank you so much for your time. You're I really, welcome. really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So, could you give me your name, please? My name is Trevor Rees. Very nice to meet you. Right, so, can you tell us a little bit about this beautiful engine right here? Well, it is. A, it, she is a wee beauty, isn't she? She attracts a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And actually, quite a number of years ago, there was a, a competition in the museum to choose the uh, exhibit that uh, was the favourite one from yeah. the people signing up. And uh, Tigger came out top by a large margin. Wow. It was a favourite machine. But it's not old. The interesting thing about Tigger is that it was the brainchild of a local engineer called Jimmy Houston. Uh, Jimmy had worked all his life in uh, 
engineering and most of it in steam engineering yeah. and uh, he was one of the very early members of the Scottish Traction Engine Society wow. it was founded around about 1960 Nin the 1950s was a time when engines of all kinds steam engines were being cast on the scrap heap yeah it was um, part of the nationalisation wasn't it that's right so anyway, Jimmy ran this uh, lovely burrell engine for a number of years. He kept it at his house in Plains and he used to uh, take it to local rallies and uh, so on. And uh, he decided that he wanted to sell it. Now, none of his friends could understand why he wanted to sell it. And we never got really got to the bottom of that, but mm. he did sell it. He, he realized after he'd sold it that he'd made a big mistake and that he had to have an engine of some kind. And he decided he was never going to afford to buy one, but that uh, he could make one. And uh, we all thought, oh, that'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually you see the uh, feature on it was the three balls. Yes. That's the governor, the speed governor. And... Uh, he came to my house in the early 1970s, and that was on my sideboard. I'd been given it by somebody, and it was done up as it is there, yeah. nicely painted, polished. And he said to me, oh, that would be just the thing. I'm thinking of building an engine, he said, and that would just suit the engine. And I thought, I ah, sure. I bet it would, Jimmy. And I, said, <laughs> oh, I wasn't very keen to give it to him. Because very often these things, when you give them away, they disappear, mm -hmm. you know, out of sight. So I said to Jimmy, well, I'll think about it, Jimmy, and uh, I'll let you know. So uh, I did think about it, and the upshot was that I, I let him have it. And the original, the first part he built of that was a fabrication for the valve and cylinders at the front end. It's the bit that sits on the boiler. And that was all designed around the governor. So the governor f fitted in perfectly, and... Um, that, I think, to produce that uh, fabrication took him a year, and he spent another year on the wheels. And altogether, using spare time that he had during the dinner breaks at uh, Anderson Brothers, it took him 10 years from starting this to finishing this. Wow. And he used to say that yeah, making a wee engine kept him alive, he said, because mm. many occasions I felt too ill to come into work. Mm. He did really... He was smitten by uh, diabetes, oh. which, you know, he didn't look after himself very mm. well. If mm. uh, if his toenails needed cleaning, he would mm. take up this manky old pen knife oh. and start <laughs> cleaning his pen toenails with a pen knife. You know, the upshot of that was that his diabetes became quite severe mm. in uh, later days. Ah, in 1984, started in 1974, in 1984, he uh, he put a fire in it for the first time, and that gentleman who was here talking to us before mm. was an employee of Anderson Brothers, wow. and was actually responsible for doing wee bits of work on the engine. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was there when Tigger was first steamed. Wow. There was an employee called Doogie Longmuir, uh, I think was related to the Andersons, and he was uh, kind of jack of all trade. Mm. in the works, and a very astute cookie indeed. <laughs> it was said that uh, Doogie had a very bad stammer, you mm. know, and he couldn't get things out. Mm. And uh, yet, if he had to do a calculation regarding a uh, customer order or something like that, he could work it out and get the answer correct. Mm. And he was very good at taking a drawing down from a description, telephone through to him, and it would be written down, he, Doogie would know whether that the material suitable for that was in stock, and he would be able to give him some idea of the amount of machining that would be needed on it. Mm. And in other words, it was an absolute in, invaluable cookie to the firm, and was paid an absolute pittance of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's, so anyway, that's an injustice right yeah. there, definitely. So anyway, Doogie was actually sitting on the engine when that was first steam. Doogie had given Jimmy a lot of encouragement and help and he felt that he needed to reward him in some way. And so Doogie was there when she was had a fire first put in it. Wow. And um, I was very friendly with um, Jimmy at that time. I was 
part of a, a pair of <laughs> cookies who'd bought a scrap steamroller in 1956. <laughs> and it was actually kept at Jimmy's place for quite a long time. Mm. And if there was anything engineering-wise needed doing to it, mm. Jimmy was the one that you would turn to. Very good at giving his expertise without expecting massive payments in return. Mm. I think that's something that's missing in today's generation, that's is right. that the, the golden goal is to help people. Where's, where's Tigger off to next after after Summer Lee? Uh, well, she's kept here. Ah, oh, right. <clears throat> we keep her here and uh, she's on display. Well, at the moment she's kept in the engineering shop. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Could you tell me your name, please? Yeah, my name's Rick. Rick, I'm Andrew. Very nice to meet Andrew. you. Uh, so can you tell us a bit about the, uh, the steam fair that we've got on at the minute? Yes, well, um, I'm a member of the Friends of Summer Lee. And we look after and assist with the, uh, the steam fleet here at the yeah. museum. So the museum's got the eight and a half ton Fowler, which you're seeing just going towards the gate at the moment. Yeah. Um, the steam launch, which is Fire Queen, which is a work in progress, maybe wow. fit for um, mm. fit for the sea, the canal, I would say, next yeah. year. Um, we've got a stationary engine foster around by the uh, sawmill, which will be fired up later on. Uh, and then there's um, there's a quarter scale uh, traction road, road locomotive there, Tigger, which is down by the gate beyond the tram at the moment. So there are four mm. items which belong to the museum, and the rest of the steam items here are visitors. They've been invited to come to show their um, engineering skills, either the full-size uh, traction engines and mm. some of the, the small model engines. That's fantastic. So tell me a bit about the, st uh, the steamboat in particular. It's fascinating. Well, as far as I know, this steam launch wasn't built as a steam launch. I wow. believe the first engine was put in it, it converted to steam in 1971. Oh. This is a new boiler, yeah. uh, and as you see, work in progress. So yeah. we're still doing some of the pipe work, but we thought we'd bring it out today just to let visitors to the museum mm. have a look. It's not just road locomotives and station locomotives, also you have steam powered uh, vessels. Is it just is it a full restoration or is it a refurb, a bit of both? Uh, well, it's, a, it's sort of a restoration. The, I say the, the engine, this this boiler is brand new, mm. so we're having to customise all of the, the pipe work to do uh, for this particular boiler. Mm. Um, clearly there's no cladding on this yet, mm. uh, and there's some fitting out to be done to the, this launch. We still need to get a propeller. Unfortunately, the propeller went missing. Oh, somebody's <laughs> probably got that polished off on a mantelpiece somewhere. So that, that's the problem in, with historic equipment. Mm. When it's brass, it, it's nice, it's functional, but it's also attractive. Mm. Um, mm, so so the stuff that we have at the museum, we have to keep under lock and key. So mm. at the end of a working day, they go to the workshop, it's locked up. A lot of it, people realise they like collecting things. We have some on this um, stand behind us with these uh, signals and lamps here. Um, people like uh, the, the, the uh, exhibitor there, they, they are quite aesthetic items to look at, but they're very collectible. Oh, definitely. And, yeah, uh, and I have some of my items on there, some of the railway stuff on there. And uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, there's something aesthetic about heavy engineering, whether it's mm. a boat, it's tracking engine, but it's one of the small model uh, engines that hit today. So, like, tell me about this steam engine here. Like, it's it's quite fascinating. Like the the, the restoration process that's been going on with it as well. Okay, well, this is the the Garrett um, articulated locomotive, which was built in Glasgow and actually saw service in South Africa. Wow! So it came back um, to from South Africa to the museum at Springburn in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, Springburn Museum is now closed and mm. the locomotive is on display here. Yeah. Because of COVID, there hasn't been a lot of uh, work done to conserve the locomotive. Uh, we just restarted now to give it an external paint mm. to tidy up the sort of the cosmetic appearance. Mm. Um, it will be quite nice when it's completely finished because it, mm. it is rather imposing. Uh, yeah. and, and to see it once again shiny and clean and de rusted. Mm -hmm. um, probably, well, in fact, it will never steam again. Mm. I believe there is a, a similar locomotive on display in the Science Museum down in Manchester. Wow. Um, so if you want to have a look at one that's had the treatment from uh, mm -hmm. volunteers and paid staff, then that yeah. might be worth a visit someday. So what's coming up next for Summer Lee? What other plan uh, projects have you got um, lined up or plans? I think uh, next month there's a, a celebration of the trams. I'm not sure how many trams will be 
uh, uh, running there. The transport group takes running with the trams, but as you understand, this site is operated by North Lancashire Council. Yes. So, so it's very much um, a, a decision with them about what events they put on. But there is a board in the reception there that tells you what the upcoming events are. And there's a website as well, North Lancashire website uh, and some of the museums. So you can find out about forthcoming events there. Well, you just mentioned there about volunteers. Uh, are some of these still looking for volunteers yes. to come and help? Uh, there's, a, there's a website, I think it's called Volunteer at NLC uh, or, or, or Volunteer at North Lancashire. Um, I'm a member of the Friends of Summer League, so as I said uh, previously, we look after the, or help assist looking after and maintaining and operating the steam fleet. But uh, the museum is already is always looking for volunteers. Doesn't matter what your skills are. Uh, there's always going to be somebody with you to mentor you. Uh, so whether it's looking after heritage vehicles, whether it's looking after carpentry, uh, there's, there's loads of things that uh, you can get involved in if you want to volunteer. Oh, definitely. That sounds fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Good day.